Warning, there are jokes on tonight's show that might offend some viewers. So if you think you might be upset, please switch over now to Comedy Central Extra. Good evening. You're about to witness some of the country's top comedians go head to head in a brutal war of words. We've turned comedy into sport. It's a bit like greyhound racing. You've got to be quick, because if you're too slow, you're going to get put down. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Carr. Welcome to a Roast Battle. Right, on with the show. If you want to play along at home, it's easy. Just turn to the person sat next to you on the sofa, look them in the eye and call them a cunt. <laughs> Helping decide our winners tonight, Catherine Ryan and our special guest judge, Noel Fielding! <laughs> Catherine is such a bad mother that if she gets pregnant again, social services have said they'll pay for the abortion. <laughs> because you pay for all my abortions. She's, she's joking. You can't get pregnant the way I fuck her. Ah, <laughs> uh, the abortions. I mean, do you have to pay tax on abortions? <laughs> Joining Catherine tonight, no fielding! Noel's comedy style is described as surreal, which is a nice way of saying, has no fucking jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, cos it's true. <laughs> Noel Fielding has a unique look, like a troll transitioning into a pixie. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> That's not an insult. <laughs> you look like all of the Ramones that died. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm loving this. <laughs> Talk me through the look this evening. What's going on? Uh, I'm channeling rhubarb and custard this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Check out these boots, though, Jimmy. <laughs> Hand painted. You can have those afterwards if you want. Uh, Catherine, as always, you look uh, you look uh, like a hooker. Um, the... <laughs> High end uh... hooker, <laughs> low end hooker. <laughs> <laughs> the poster on what you actually get. <laughs> See, no one got hurt there. Compliment. Nice. <laughs> Yours would be a real sensory experience, you know? Cos you've got, like, fuzzy, you've got leather, you've got the hair and yeah. the smell. You it's know. mainly blind people that I have sex with. <laughs> <laughs> OK, before we get on with our first battle, it's time to meet the man keeping order tonight. It's the referee that runs the roast, Brian Moses! <laughs> Jimmy Carr. Yeah. All right. He's great. He's ready for the first battle. Yeah. This first couple are married for now. It's Laura Lex and Tom Livingston. To be honest, I find it really hard to write jokes about Laura's appearance because I think she's beautiful. I am literally three times the size of her. And if she wins with words, I'll hit her. <laughs> you can't say that. You can't say that. Oh, living with Tom gives me all the ammunition I need. He has a brain like a sieve. So I guess he won't remember all the horrible things I've said about him today. She's an expert at the guilt trip. I'm expecting a kind of guilt gap year for this one. Tom's not going to win, but if he does win, I'm really good at making his life a living hell. Two, here are the rules. Rule one, it's five jokes apiece. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, if the police ask, that's icing sugar on Noel's face. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. That's cocaine, baby. <laughs> Jimmy, who's going first? Uh, well, I mean, it's a fascinating one. So you're, you're married. It looks like you both settled. <laughs> <laughs> would, no, would you ever roast the other half? Sandy Toxvic. <laughs> I called her an Ewok once. <laughs> Didn't work out for me. Turns out lesbians are pretty fucking hard. <laughs> Got into a knife fight, she won. 
cut me from anus to eyebrow. <laughs> OK, so, um, Laura, do you, want to, do you want to go first? I do, please, Jimmy. Should we do this, Brian? Let's do it. Can we? Yeah. Should we? Are we ready? Yeah. The roof! I mean, I love this man. One of the things I love most about Tom is that he's a feminist and he proves it to me every day by doing cute little things like earning less than me. <laughs> Tom's hobbies are things like Dungeons and Dragons and wrestling. So, ladies, if you're wondering why you're suddenly drier than a sandcastle in a tumble dryer, my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, your hobbies are like your penis. Fucking pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Laura is very open about her long history with mental health, which means it's quite hard to prepare for a roast battle with her, because I had no idea which of her personalities was going to show up. <laughs> Laura's a lot like a, a roller coaster. There are ups and downs, and a lot of people have thrown up whilst riding her. <laughs> if only you knew how many of those were since our marriage. <laughs> Tom really likes his food. He also really likes anyone else's he can get his hands on. <laughs> um, they say what you eat can really affect the taste of your sperm, which is why Tom's just tastes like a heart attack. <laughs> uh, Laura is incredibly indecisive. She couldn't even pick one haircut. <laughs> it's also all dyed, all of this. This uh, rich colour is covering something old and grey and sad, as is this dress. <laughs> his wife. <laughs> Tom's not that fussed about his appearance, from what I can tell. <laughs> the only thing he puts less effort into is his marriage, career and personal relationships. <laughs> Tom is so lazy he thinks liking Marvel films counts as a personality. <laughs> Tom is so lazy he'd rather not eat than have to wipe his own ass later. <laughs> Tom is so lazy we can only fuck during earthquakes. <laughs> It's funny, because uh, Laura obviously cares a lot about what she looks like. She works really hard to come out here looking like lesbian edition Polly Pocket. <laughs> uh, uh, to get serious, uh, Laura and I haven't been able to have kids, because I don't want to fuck her. <laughs> We've talked about adoption, but a tiny, useless, crying blob isn't sure if she's ready for that yet. <laughs> I mean, I'll admit, I haven't always been the most attentive husband. You know, I like playing video games, reading comics, watching superhero films. I'm like a kid in an adult's body. Something Laura's never going to experience. <laughs> Let's go! You are on thin fucking ice for a heavy man. <laughs> um, when I first started dating Tom, I was too embarrassed to tell my parents that I was dating an improv comedian, so I told them he was in prison for fucking corpses. <laughs> The truth is, we love each other. You know, Laura and I need each other. If we got divorced, I mean, Laura would become her own worst nightmare. A sort of less attractive version of a mother <laughs> living off a toxic cocktail of antidepressants, white wine and hate-fucking therapists that look like her dad. <laughs> and I would live in a slightly messier house. <laughs> Wow, I'm made of questions right now. Uh, so, can I ask about the... Because the look is quite... It looks like your, your, your one ear has had chemo. <laughs> I mean, glass houses, Jimmy, but, yeah. That is a strong look. I'm going to defend like you there. I think your look's good. You two don't look like you're from the same universe. <laughs> Not at all. You're from a Hobbit convention, but you have got some sass going on. I mean, you're fierce and slightly sexy. Is it a good time to move in after he's just said... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one who can say this, but, Laura, you're, like, super tiny with unfairly big boobs. Somewhere there's a tall woman with small tits feeling really hard done by. I think it might be Tom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Did you get turned on at all while you were insulting each other? Yeah, you said I was pretty, and that is the most alive I felt down there in what's it been for? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Catherine, what do you think? I, li I liked a lot of these jokes. Tom earns less than you. Both his hobbies and his penis are pathetic. <laughs> he makes ladies dry. And then Tom followed up with, if we got divorced, Laura would be a less attractive version of her mother existing on a cocktail of antidepressants and white wine while fucking a therapist who looks like her dad. Nothing wrong with that, Tom. Welcome to my life. But I had you as the winner. <laughs> Okay, Noel, who have you got pound for pound as the, as the winner here? Tom. You think Tom? Just. Although I do fancy your wife, sorry. Um... <laughs> I mean, the whole thing was absolutely great. Uh, Tom is our winner. Uh, that's it for part one. Remember, if you've been upset by anything you've seen so far, we have a free advice line. And that line is, learn to take a joke, fuck knuckle, see you in two. <laughs>Five jokes apiece. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. <laughs> and rule three, you better work, bitch. Yeah! Jimmy, who's going first? Uh, well, be before we begin, can I just say you all look like a disgusting betrayal of God's love. <laughs> first impressions? Uh, no? You look amazing, all of you, I have to say. Oh. Moses, oh. in between these guys, you look like a barcode. <laughs> Lager, you're from Camden, aren't you? I'm... I do live in Camden. I'm originally from up north, but you can find me um, rolling around in my own shit down Camden. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, I live quite near that. I feel like we might have had sex in a skip once. Oh, or... probably, darling. I've had more pricks than a second-hand dartboard. I really <laughs> have. So, you're in a musical drag troupe called Denim. Yes. And, and you guys are from RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> so, the way, the way I remember it is made it, not made it. Uh, okay, I mean, I'm genuinely uh, very excited to see who's going to win this and uh, who's going to go home with their tail between their legs. So, <laughs> what? I say tail. Um, <laughs> uh, Denim, I think you're up first. Denim, are you ready? We're very, very, very. Are we ready? Bagger, <laughs> honestly, look, look at the state of you. Seriously, 
Honestly, I've seen more attractive herpes sores. <laughs> you look like Simon Cowell fucked a blobfish. <laughs> you look like the decaying oh, oh. offcuts of Catherine Ryan. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, ladies. This is Glamroo, everyone. Everyone give her a big round of applause. Come on. This is Glamaroo. Now, we live in 2019 where you can identify as fucking anything, all right? Now, she identifies as non-binary. So her preferred pronouns are they or them, or as the general public call it, that fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> no bugger. Them. Oh, yeah. Fucking them. Mess. Them mess. Them. Yes. Do you have trouble with grammar? Singular pronouns, not that hard. Oh. Neither's a shave, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually really surprised to learn that Liverpool has a low life expectancy of 58. But after just three seconds of looking directly at the Viv's botched face, I now see why the city's been driven to mass alcoholism. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Viv, your face is so stuffed with plastic, David Attenborough's now campaigning to save it. <laughs> I'm just so happy that we have a Middle Eastern queen in drag on TV. I mean, it's such a great opportunity that she's got to come and do this because, let's face it, we're never going to have a RuPaul's Drag Race Iraq. Can you just imagine the end scene? Ladies, the time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Literally. <laughs> Actually, queens, I've left a little package for you in your room. <laughs> But honestly, this is going to come as quite the shock to a lot of people, but Baga is actually still in the closet. Yeah, she's a Tory. <laughs> but honestly, Baga, being a Tory kind of suits you because, you know, you're just like the country in a state of disrepair, falling apart at the seams and constantly being fucked by rich, tax-avoidant men like Jimmy. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say, when I first started doing drag, it was really fucking hard. It takes up so much of my time to get into this. I've got to spend an hour shaving, an hour in makeup. All this cunt has to do is step inside a fucking burqa and she's good to go, all right? <laughs> so, Oz, can we just get a zoom in on these toes, please? She's like she's filming the fucking sequel to Cliffhanger. Ouch. Where's Joe? So, not many people know this, but the Vivian actually lost her bladder to a ketamine addiction, which is why she stinks of piss. <laughs> oh, Crystal, um, I just found out, when you were five, you put on your first dress and you were singing to Celine Dion's My Arse Will Go On. Yeah. Well, like the Titanic, she likes to go down and she's full of dead semen, so... <laughs> At least I could get Leo to fuck me, honey. <laughs> it would have to be a big fucking lifeboat to save you, bitch. <laughs> ah! Make some noise! Bravo! Crystal! And the Vivian! And bag of chips! Come on over, everyone. Well, first things first, can I just say, best episode of Mrs. Brown's Boys ever. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, what did you make of it, uh, Noel? My favourite line was Simon Cow fucking a blob <laughs> you got beautiful legs, by the way. I couldn't really take my Who eyes off you. Who are you talking to? You. Oh, thank you very you knew, much. You knew, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I loved your delivery yeah. as well. It was just very quiet and gentle, mm. but vicious at times. Um, <laughs> but I think maybe you guys were quicker coming back. And there was a little bit of improv from you two as well, I noticed. It's amazing what I can do on the spot. I love your delivery. It's like Mutley from mm. that cartoon. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. fucking hell. <laughs> That's 40 a day for you, 40 a day. I'm like, Deidre Barlow. 40 cigarettes or dicks? <laughs> <laughs> I think bag of chips could be quite attractive, but you sort of need a bigger face. It doesn't all fit, does it? <laughs> It's like you need, like, all the features are fine, they're just all squ squ squished in. <laughs> it looks like someone's drawn a face on a thumb. <laughs> what did you think, Catherine? Well, I've been watching Drag Race, I've been a fan of denim for a really long time, 
And I'm with Noel, really uh, unique, impeccable delivery. Uh, whereas on the other side, Baga, you are an inspiration to working class queens everywhere. I don't know what kind of makeup you're wearing, but I know that it's stolen. And I also know... <laughs> <laughs> I love Drag Race. I admire the BBC's relentless commitment to making television with no women in it. You know? <laughs> I had the girls neck and neck until the final devastating, very personal, cruel reference to the uh, bladder ketamine addiction. And so for me, it's denim. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess. Uh, who, do you, who do you have as a winner, No, It was very close. I loved you all, but I'm going to go. You're going Drag Race? Yeah. OK. Thanks, no. It's very, very close. Very good joke. Um, I think just because of the old-school bag of chips, northern... <laughs> I think I'm going to give it to Drag Race. Let's have a quick think about uh, Joke of the Night. What have you got, Noel? Uh, well, I mean, I don't really like jokes, as you know. I like imagery. So, Laura, <laughs> I loved your joke about sperm tasting like a heart attack. <laughs> I thought that was kind of beautiful, but deadly. I like the one earlier, I think, when Tom said uh, his wife... His wife mm. was like a roller coaster, ups, downs, and a lot of people have thrown up riding it. <laughs> I think that gets Joke of the Night. Well done, Tom. <laughs> If you thought the show was funny, please tell a friend. And if you found it offensive, well, you probably haven't got any friends. Good night. <laughs> right, on with the roast. Helping decide our winners tonight, Catherine Ryan and our special guest judge, Big Nasty! <laughs> Yes, Big Nasty is here, which will come as news to Big Nasty, who's higher than his own cholesterol. <laughs> you can say what you like about Big Nasty, because he's too mashed to care, the silly fat cunt. <laughs> ouch, Jimmy, ouch. <sighs> you know I've got nothing but love for you, but I'm going to say mean things. Mo Farrisine. That is not the Mo Farrisine. <laughs> What are you talking about? Mo Farisite. That's not an M, that's a heart, motherfucker. <laughs> Is that not a big fucking heart? <laughs> Mo Farisite? What? <laughs> how, how fucking lazy are you that you can't be bothered? You've got to just do... I mean... <laughs> We've spoken about this before, but last time we were chatting, you were telling me you were getting ready for an MMA fight. Yeah, it's a training today. <laughs> Who any shit now will just jump on the stage and rush you? What are you saying now? Looking like a motherfucking kendo. What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? How, uh, Catherine, how would you do in a, in a, in a bare knuckle fight? You say that like it's hypothetical. Like I didn't just kick the shit out of two school run moms this morning. Hold it back! Hold it back! Hold it back! Yeah. I did forget about World Book Day, bitch. All of that. <laughs> all of that. All of that. All of that. And Jimmy Carr. Man can see your little fucked up hairline from far. <laughs> oh. it's, it's so great to have Big Nasty here this evening for what will surely be his last television appearance. Uh, <laughs> that's not me, that's heart disease, brother. Uh, they... <laughs> Before we get on with our first battle, it's time to meet the man keeping order tonight. He's the referee that runs the roast. It's Brian Moses! <laughs> Keep it going for Jimmy Cole! <laughs> Who's ready for a bell? <laughs> First up, we have Joe Sutherland and Sophie Duca. <laughs> Joe and I are so similar, except he's a mad whore. Sophie and I are basically the same person, except she's a dumb bitch. As best friends, we know all each other's truths. And, baby, the burn book is opening. 
Joe is a huge fan of the Spice Girls, which at least explains why he thinks black women are scary. On, On roast, roast days, we wear pink. pink. It's Black Panther versus Pink Panther. Make some noise for Sophie Duker. Okay, here are the rules. Rule one, it's five jokes a piece. Rule two, nothing is off limits, except for physical contact. And rule three, never get on a seesaw with Big Nasty. You'll be there all fucking night. <laughs> Jimmy, who do you want to see go first? Well, what do you want first, a gay man or a bisexual black woman? <laughs> it feels like Secret Santa at the brothel I go to. Uh, <laughs> which, uh, who wants to go first? Go first, honey. Joe, are you ready? I'm ready. Are we ready? Sophie and I actually go back a long way. You see, she started in comedy by getting into an improv group to hit on a boy who quit comedy and is now my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Forget once you go black, you never go back. Once you go Sophie, you give up your dreams and turn gay. <laughs> oh. Believe it or not, Joe's first job was at Greg's. And much like the chain, teenage Joe was cheap, cheerful, and always happy to help out an office worker with a hot filling on their lunch break. <laughs> uh, Joe actually used to model. Audience fatality. <laughs> Joe used to model, but he got bored of the bright lights shining in his face when he was trying to suck off the photographer. <laughs> okay, uh, Sophie, uh, yeah, Sophie identifies as pansexual, uh, which is just a bisexual with a podcast. <laughs> Um, at school, Sophie would write a lot of Harry Potter fan fiction. Oh, sorry, I've said that wrong. At school, Sophie was a massive virgin. <laughs> and uh, now that's all changed. In fact, her nickname for her fanny is the Chamber of No Secrets. Because <laughs> she'll let anything slither in. <laughs> Surprise, Joe's triggered by the story of a boy who lived in a closet. Um, <laughs> Joe, honey, you know I say this with love, but your hipster haircut makes you look like a cross-dressing monk. <laughs> Not so much Friar Tuck as Friar tucked his dick between his legs. I'm so happy to see someone uh, with Sophie's background doing so well. Finally, there's a place in comedy for a privately educated Oxford graduate. <laughs> Yeah, Sophie went to an all-girls private school where she picked up the skills that got her where she is today. In fact, I can smell Catherine Ryan's pussy on her breath. <laughs> hey, Sophie, you better fucking shoot back, you know, Sophie. Bust your clip, Sophie. Bust your fucking clip. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, it's sweet that you say that, Joe. I think you're just jealous of privately educated gays because we had money for expensive facials and you just had to get spunked on behind the bike. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> I'm 42 years old. <laughs> Joe thinks he's a timeless beauty, but he actually looks like a Victorian waif in a pamphlet about the dangers of masturbation. <laughs> Um, okay, Sophie is what many would call a bounty, uh, brown on the outside, and everybody hates her. <laughs> Sophie, Sophie, you're privately educated, an Oxford graduate who works in comedy. You're so white, when you visit your family in Ghana, they think it's Stacey Dooley. <laughs> Fired. 
I'd like to finish by talking about something that's largely hidden tonight, uh, Joe's tattoos. So uh, Joe has a diamond tattoo on his bicep. It used to be a lump of coal, but it transformed under the crushing weight of his parents' disappointment. <laughs> He also has a tattoo that says role model, which is great because Joe is really inspiring. Now, little boys everywhere can look up to him and know that they can grow up to be a gender-fluid Jack Whitehall. Wow. Oh, my God. That was hard. Don't be Joker! Go Sutherland! That was a battle. Hug it out. Uh, just a couple of points of order here. A gender-fluid Jack Whitehall is just Jack Whitehall. <laughs> uh, Catherine, what did you think? Well, this roast was so diverse, it's already being made into a sitcom for E4. It... <laughs> I loved when, Joe, you said that once you go Sophie, you give up on your dreams and turn gay. <laughs> But when you said Sophie's breath smelled like my pussy, delicious though that would be, I've never been fucked by someone with an education, so I didn't really follow. <laughs> I really enjoyed when you said Joe reminded you of a Victorian waif in a pamphlet about the dangers of masturbation. And for that beautiful joke, my winner is Sophie. Big nasty. Uh, <laughs> unusual for you to be a, a judge and not in front of one. Um, <laughs> real shit. Real shit. Hand bone change. Told you, man. Uh, what, what did you make of this? What do you think? Man, let it all, yeah? He was Ross Clark shooting. You was shooting, cuz. <laughs> yeah, powerful delivery. And you was, you was, you was hitting the drops like, like DJ EZ in the rave, cuz. Yeah. <laughs> now, swear down, was he not hitting the drops? I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I gotta be honest with you, I agree. He was hitting those drops, wasn't he? <laughs> Hey, Joe, you won, fam. You showed their face, fam. Saving the joke, fam. Thank Sorry, you, Sophie. Thank you. Thank you. We got that. I mean, Joe, you had her background, privately educated Oxford graduate. That was a great joke. You had another joke about the bounty bar uh, in the... Brown on the outside. Brown on the outside. We all thought we knew where you were going with Brown on the outside. And nobody likes you. I've killed him. Joe, I think you absolutely smashed it. I think we have our winner. <laughs> Join us after the break. If you enjoyed the first half, why not tell your friends? If you didn't, why not fuck yourself up the arse with a broom handle? <laughs> We're good either way. See you in five. Welcome back to Roast Battle, the show that takes political correctness outside and beats it up for being gay. <laughs> Let's have another round of applause for tonight's guest judge, living proof that smoking weed really does give you the munchies. It's Big Nasty! Can I get some munchies? Can you get some munchies? We'll bring you, we'll bring you some Haribo, baby. I know you love that. And I, obviously, I make jokes about your, your weight, but they're just a bit of fun, the jokes I make about your weight. I'm, I'm not like diabetes. Diabetes don't play. 100%. <laughs> diabetes go and take your feet. <laughs> your tight trousers are going to take your fucking circulation of your balls, bruv. <laughs> I know. What you don't know... What you don't know is I've got very small balls. <laughs> are you really so small you piss on your ball bags? <laughs> Does everyone not do that? I think everyone does that. Um, everyone. OK. Uh, <laughs> if anyone has seen Big Nasty's eyes, no one leaves oh. the room. <laughs> Until we find Big Nasty's eyes. They're in there somewhere. Hey, don't look at me. Don't look at me. You've got to do the show. You've got to do the show. Don't look at me. You know you're in the show, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. Who's ready for another battle? <laughs> Shout out to Big Nasty. I love this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this battle is as posh as it gets. It's Jamie Lang and Ivo Graham. They say popular kids at school turn into pricks as adults. And Jamie was really popular at school. Ivo may beat me tonight. You know, he's a comedian. I'm not. But at least it will remind me of the school days uh, where he always used to beat me off. We're both uh, posh, 
are both polite. The only difference is um, I have a soul. Jamie's a reality TV star. I'm a stand-up comedian. I travel around the country doing this. The only place Jamie's been other than Chelsea is Leeds, and that's only because he fucked up his A-levels. Okay, gentlemen, here are the rules. Rule one, it's five jokes apiece. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, please keep checking Big Nasty's pulse. He might have died five minutes ago. <laughs> Jimmy, who's going first? Uh, how do you guys know each other? Uh, we, went to, we went to school together. We went to school together in the late 90s. It was a very special time. We had fun together. <laughs> We had all sorts of fun together, Jim. OK, well, Ivo, you're an award-winning comedian, uh, a seasoned roast battler respected by your peers. Uh, Jamie, you're also here. <laughs> Ivo, I think you should go first because you know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> Ivo, are we ready? Yes, I'm ready. Thanks. Are you ready? Yeah! Oh, Jamie's quite nervous. Um, he's never actually roasted anyone without Spencer Matthews hanging out the other side of her. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's one of these men who, um, well, he, he uses his position of power to, to get women into bed, uh, which is pretty impressive, given he's got no position of power. <laughs> Come on, girls, if you want a balding predator, at least Harvey Weinstein will get you into a movie. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hey, hey what's happening? Well, on. Uh, so, I'm very super smart. He knows the names of 650 UK MPs. 650! That's smart, Ivo. But can you hear that? Yep, that's the sound of 650 vaginas drying up. Oh! Thank you. Off the ropes! Yes, my G. Uh, Jamie's great-great-grandfather invented uh, the digestive, uh, meaning that Jamie was the only guy at school whose games of soggy biscuit were tax-deductible. <laughs> Ivory went to Eton, and, and I'm not saying he had a rough time, but his arsehole is the inspiration behind Eton Mass. Can <laughs> <laughs> oh, hear that, Ivo? <laughs> lovely school, lovely pudding. <laughs> <laughs> Despite an operation to stop it happening, uh, Jamie's actually going bald. Uh, his hairline's going backwards faster than his career. <laughs> Uh, it's actually happening so quickly, he's having chemotherapy to slow the process down. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie was so bald a couple of years ago uh, that I thought I was watching an episode of Made in Chelsea, but it turned out to be a documentary about poisoned Russian spy Alexander Litvinenko. <laughs> <laughs> Ivo looks like one of those posh... You know, posh guys that has a fucked up fetish. Ivo, you look like you can't orgasm unless your girlfriend pegs you dressed as an eight year old chimney sweep. <laughs> Last joke. Lovely school, lovely pudding. And. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jamie was actually meant to be on Strictly Come Dancing, but got injured just before the show started, which was really disappointing for Jamie. He was so excited to cheat on his girlfriend and uh, <laughs> blame it on a curse that wasn't his personality. <laughs> Ouch. Still, a bit of a relief to finally have a TV show that doesn't have Jamie Lang on. <laughs> I'm not having a go, but you're like gluten. Barely anyone could tolerate you, but you're still in fucking everything. <laughs> I must remind everyone here that, uh, and, and you, Ivo, that, uh, you know, this is your career. Uh, I'm here for fun. Um, <laughs> I want to give a big round of applause. Ivo is just a, a, he's a new father, which is to a baby girl, which is a big exciting. And I've got Ivo a present, which I'm really excited about. Hold on, wait there, Ivo, here it is. Uh, there you go, you can open that up. It's really exciting. Just have a look at that. There you go. Uh, it's adoption papers. She'll have a better life with me. <laughs> Jamie 
Okay, Catherine, what did you make of this? I loved it. I thought you both had such strong jokes. As someone from another country, I come here and I learn that rich people give their children away so they can go wank on cookies and <laughs> eat them. That's some fucked up shit that your parents do to you. I'm not proud of having gone to Eton, I should say. No. I spent my life apologising to people for having gone to Eton. So, Jamie, you went to Eton, Ivo, and, Jamie, you didn't go to Eton because you didn't get in. Yeah, you had... Well, what, what do you mean? What do you mean you didn't get in? Your daddy's just got to write a cheque. Uh, I imagine daddy just looked at you and went, that is throwing good money after bad, isn't it? <laughs> when... You can't exactly, polish yeah. a turd, let's leave it. <laughs> do you know what, uh, Jimmy, you are always trying to be funnier than everyone else, uh, but I will always be richer, so it's OK. <laughs> His money cock in the room. <laughs> Woof. Woof. <laughs> I wish I'd thrown my money cock in the room. <laughs> Ivo and I have a lot in common. Uh, Ivo, we both, I believe, uh, lost our virginities in our twenties. And much also, so. uh, the other thing we haven't gone. <laughs> we both <laughs> lost it to. Uh... <laughs> when did you lose your virginity, Mr. Nasty? <laughs> <laughs> Way before you, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what, what do you got, Catherine? What do you got as a winner? Well, neither of them have ever had a nine-to-five job unless whipping peasants counts as work. <laughs> Jamie, you held your own, but in the end, Ivo is always going to do it better. Ivo's the winner for me. Uh, Big Nasty, what did you think? <laughs> Jamie, you just did it, like, just raw, in it? Just come off, but you're dealing with uh, an assassin, a professional shooter. <laughs> Boom. I say Ivo won this one. OK. Uh, Thank you, Big Nasty. That is high praise, literally. <laughs> oh, always. Come on. <laughs> no, because he's saying you praised him and you're also very high right now, so... Yeah, I got that one. OK. <laughs> so I think we have a unanimous decision here. I think Ivo has it. Ivo Gregory! So, in, but over the course of both battles, what do you think, joke of the night? Well, when Ivo said that Jamie wanted to compete on Strictly so that he could cheat on his girlfriend and blame it on a curse that wasn't his personality. <laughs> and what you got, Big Nasty? Uh, Ruben, there's been a lot of powerful jokes in the night, fam. But can yeah. you remember any of them? <laughs> For me, it was uh, Joe had a couple of incredible jokes. Joe was fucking was... shooting, cos. He was shooting. Call it <laughs> saying she's a bouty brown on the outside and nobody likes you. <laughs> I'm going to give joke of the night to uh, to Joe for the bounty joke. <laughs> uh, that is all we've got time for. If you've been offended by anything you've seen on the show tonight, then I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise, not just to you, but to all the fun vacuum joy hating pricks out there. Good night. <laughs> Helping decide our winners tonight, Catherine Ryan and special guest judge Richard Iwadi. <laughs> Richard is here tonight judging roast battle, which can only mean one thing. The money from the IT crowd has finally run out. <laughs> Richard, you were bullied at school, I assume. Um, <laughs> what's the worst thing anyone's ever said to you? You cannot drop out of roast battle. <laughs> Um, what have you come from? This is my interpretation of Richard Ayoade. I just felt like Richard is a fashion icon, his personality sparkles, he's an intellectual, and then with this headpiece, it reminds me a little bit of his hair. <laughs> well, it's glamorous and racist. Well done. <laughs> Before we get on with our first battle, it's time to meet the man keeping order tonight. He's the referee that runs the roast. It's Brian Moses! <laughs> Keep it going for Jimmy Carr. Come on. Yes. Are we ready for a battle? First up, we have Ed Knight and Huge Davies. 
This is an open goal for me, yeah? This is it for huge, huge. So tonight, it's prison rules. That means I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna find the biggest guy in the room, put his trousers down, and suck his dick as hard as I can. And when I'm done, wait, so what, was the, what was the question? Sorry? This is gonna be it, yeah. I'm gonna roast him five ways from Sunday. I'm obviously doing this for a lot of money. This is the easiest 200 pounds I'll ever make. He's gonna have roasts out the fucking wazoo, can I swear? <laughs> He's gonna have jokes coming out of his fucking asshole. Okay, here are the rules. Rule one, it's five jokes apiece. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, not all black men are cool, streetwise, and handsome. Right, Richard? <laughs> I was tuning you out, sorry. <laughs> are we ready? Yeah! It's on his face and how he's dressed At his clinically depressed He looks like he's been unplugged from the Matrix But instead of the red pill, he's taken six Antidepressants that now stop all his erection And the blank expression of a serial killer As you can tell, Huge is a virgin. Um... <laughs> He's a virgin, despite that fuck handle on the back of his head. Uh... <laughs> the fuck am I meant to win this? Please, uh, could we all bow our heads in prayer? Like to defend minority groups in his stand-up shows. He's known as one of the most woke and preaching comedians on the circuit. <laughs> Ed likes to talk about his bisexuality, vegetarianism, feminism, his OCD, and his Irish heritage. <laughs> it's incredible. I've never seen someone try so hard to look interesting. <laughs> I sometimes think you can be a little bit of a cunt. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up me being like vegetarian and part Irish and stuff. Me being like a vegetarian, part Irish is why Huge feels so at home around me because I am a rice paddy. <laughs> You know, it's the keyboard by now, I'm sure. <laughs> that keyboard isn't the only thing huge wears hanging around his neck. He's also got the great dishonor he brings upon his ancestors. <laughs> uh, it's quite a young boy. I think it's almost time for his bedtime. <laughs> so we're just gonna wind it down for right here. <laughs> these, are the, these are the chords, Ed. This is it. C. Mm -hmm. E. F, yeah. and D. Yeah. These were your GCSEs. <laughs> Me and Hughes do a lot of like quite nerdy stuff together. Hughes is quite a nerd at heart. We go to the cinema a lot play a lot of video games. Uh, and once Huge actually came to me for advice because he was writing a song to help him remember the original 151 Pokemon in order. Um, <laughs> I know, and my advice was, kill yourself. Last joke! 
this one's called uh, Valentine's Day. It's, it's based on a true story. So here we go. Valentine's Day two years ago. I've just been dumped. He's all alone. He's crying to me down the telephone at half past eight. But it's too late. He's already seen Black Panther alone. He's already been kicked out of a weather spoons. He said, I wonder if she's missing me. I said, probably. But I was thinking, she doesn't love you anymore. She doesn't love you anymore. She doesn't love you anymore. I was 100% sure <laughs> She doesn't love you anymore She still doesn't love you anymore No amount of TV shows would ever mean that she loved you more than her fiancé She doesn't love you anymore She doesn't love you anymore she doesn't love you. She doesn't love you, Ed. Just fucking move on. It's been, it's been three years. Come on. It's good to have a hobby, you know? <laughs> Anyone can learn to play the piano. But some of us don't need one to justify our presence on stage because we can... <laughs> Because we can write actual jokes. For example... But not actual chords, though. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think huge is a nickname. It's not. It's actually an Indonesian name that translates to shit Bill Bailey. I mean, that was excellent on all counts, wasn't it? That was amazing, right? <laughs> Huge, I know, um... Are you, uh, let me get this straight. You're half Welsh and your dad is Stephen Cigar, yes? <laughs> <laughs> That's extremely rude. And I, and I... To Stephen Cigar, oh. yeah. <laughs> Unless he can break someone's elbow by pushing it the wrong way, he is no son of Stephen Cigar. Wow. <laughs> no, he's quite strong. That's, that's really heavy. Well, we all knew he was strong after he threw that fridge through the window at the end of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Richard, Richard, what did you make of this battle? Well, I'm enjoying the continuing of the casual racism, let's just say that. <laughs> um, so, so that's wonderful. I feel we've all dishonoured our ancestors. Um, <laughs> and Foot Locker. <laughs> um, <laughs> Richard, who have you got as a winner in this battle? I like both of you very much, um, and the thing to remember is that, presumably, she did originally love you. <laughs> um, so, I... C can it be a draw? Is that OK? OK. Catherine, what did you make of this battle? I really loved this. Um, huge, when you came out, I was thinking, no, what is that? That's going to be absolutely terrible. A lot of people think that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you came out here, I thought you looked like one of those duos who wants to sing their own song on The X Factor. <laughs> Based on the genuine rage that I felt upon seeing the keyboard and having that transformed into joy, you've just tipped it huge for me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we all thought you were going to be shit and you were really good. So, I think on that very narrow margin, I think Hugh is our winner. Yeah. That's it for part one. Join us after the break for more of the kind of language that would make a whore blush. No offence, Catherine. <laughs> Welcome back to 
close battle. Let's have another round of applause for tonight's guest judge, Richard Awadi. <laughs> Uh, Richard, you, you've made two films. I'm not saying they're unsuccessful, but more people have seen The Queen's Vagina. <laughs> All right, evil Roger Federer. <laughs> that is fair. Is, is making the films your proudest achievement? Well, it's not this moment. <laughs> what, what are you working on at the moment? What's your, what's your next thing? Some kind of exit strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, what about you, uh, Catherine? Are you enjoying your evening? I'm always enjoying being with you, Jimmy. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope Richard doesn't leave us. When you say leave us, is this a menage? What is this? <laughs> that is part of the contract. You should have read the whole thing. I, I think it's very clear by my attendance that I did not read the contract. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ready for another battle? Know Richard just as my friend's much older husband. The public knows him as kind of rotund 90s has been, so I'll probably focus in on their version. I'm a feminist, but tonight I'm going to be going for Sarah's looks, her sexual history, and her age. She's very old for a woman. My career is doing this while Richard does this, and it seems that here tonight at Roast Battle, We'll meet in the middle. This is like the tortoise and the hare, and I'm the hare, and I'm going to win this race. Go <laughs> so fucking crazy for Sarah Barrett! Okay, here are the rules. Rule one, it's five jokes apiece. Rule two, nothing is off limits except physical contact. And rule three, remember, Sarah, you're battling Richard. And Richard, you're battling gout or osteoporosis or... <laughs> Jimmy, who's going first? Uh, I think fat David Ginola should go first. <laughs> are you ready, Rich? I'm ready. Are we ready? Very much. I was uh, I was a bit worried about doing this show in the Me Too era, a middle-aged man saying provocative things to a young woman. So I would like to thank Roast Battle for giving me such a horrible old one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, not that old. Right. I'm just very tired because, like you, I have kids. Unlike you, I spend time with them. <laughs> now. Oh. Richard, <clears throat> you're so squat. You look like if you sat on a wall, you would have a great fall. <laughs> you calling me Humpty Dumpty there early on, because I'd heard your nickname was Humpta Dumpta. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> up, guys, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I, I know very, very sadly you and your husband struggled for a long time to mm -hmm. have a baby. It was uh, very tragic in, in lots of ways. And finally you opted for IVF. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, how long did it take the consultant to stop laughing when you told them your name was Baron? <laughs> <laughs> I want to clarify that I wasn't angry at that. I was just distracted thinking what Stuart Lee could have done with that joke. <laughs> we wouldn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> so you were part of the 90s comedy double act, yeah. Lee and Herring. Of course, Stuart Lee went on to become the revered stand-up of his generation. Whereas Richard, oh my God. <laughs> The only way your career could have ended more abruptly during the turn of the millennium would have been if you'd worked at the World Trade Center. <laughs> Sarah, I, I happen to know uh, that you have an unusually long labia. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, I've been told uh, that your labia was the inspiration for both the monster and the title of Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's perfect for any guy who wants to know what it'd be like to fuck a paper bag full of calamari. <laughs> uh, yeah. in, in fairness to him, they are long enough to braid. I'll admit that. Um, <laughs> Essentially, it's like you've got bingo wings between your legs. Is that... Is that... Is that... <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Richard does a podcast. Don't know if you guys have heard it. It's one of these sort of, like, rambling interview podcasts. <laughs> so, my question, my question to you, Richard, yeah. is who do you think gets filled with a, a greater sense of dread and obligation? Your wife, when you want to fuck her, or your more famous friends when you ask them to go on your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Joe? Okay. Um, charmingly, you were nearly 40 when you decided to get into show business, which is a... T that's... 280 in women on TV years. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, don't worry, I'm sure you'll still manage to find work somewhere. You, you remind me a little bit of the, uh, the actor Emma Stone. Uh, you might get to play her great, 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 great grandmother's desiccated corpse. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's hard for Richard to understand starting something at 40 because by 35, his best days were behind him. <laughs> <laughs> So, congratulations on that classic showbiz achievement of having a kid in your 50s. Oh! <laughs> so great! You worry about how much time you must have left with your kids, right? Like, you must worry that they'll only really get to know their second dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank God for the podcast, right? Thank God your kids will have the podcast if they want to get to know that you were a tedious cunt. <laughs> I've got to say, I don't even feel comfortable uh, judging uh, Richard Herring because he was one of my comedy heroes growing up. Fabulous that you're here. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. Now we'll say some very unpleasant things. Um, <laughs> uh, Richard, what did you make of this battle? Well, I felt some of it was hostile. <laughs> I liked it, actually, um, when you workshop the labia material together. Um, <laughs> I really liked that moment. I felt there was a genuine spirit of discovery. Very few criticisms. Um, Richard, you said your labia was. I would have rather you'd said labia were. Catherine Ryan, what did you think? <laughs> I loved you both so much. You know, I'm a big fan of both of you as stand-ups. Sarah, I love roasting in this accent, especially because you've waitressed for so many years. You could really feel the pent-up rage. <laughs> there were a lot of jokes tonight about Richard being washed up. Absolutely not. He's like a Tamagotchi, like, really big in the 90s, and then people gave up checking if he was alive, but they're back. <laughs> <laughs> they're back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you this. Someone's clearly been feeding it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Richard, who have you got as a winner here? As you can tell, I don't strictly speaking care. Um, <laughs> so, um, I'll say, can I say draw again? I just did. <laughs> oh, all right, Switzerland. Uh, so, Catherine, what do you? Uh... A man who squirrels as many funds away as you do should not be referencing Switzerland. <laughs> Of course, of course. Um, Catherine Ryan. I loved them both, but I'm voting for Sarah. Oh, good. Thank you. I think it was very, very close. But for the World Trade Center, your career couldn't have ended more abruptly around the turn of the century if you'd been in the World Trade Center. I thought it was so devastating. So I'm going to say, Sarah, you got it. Whoa! We've got to talk about Joke of the Night. I think my, my Joke of the Night was Ed's uh, comeback uh, when he was uh, described as a vegetarian with Irish heritage. I'm a rice paddy. I think it's a Joke of the Night. we've got time for if you'd like to complain about the show there's a simple procedure to follow one grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper two put the paper aside you won't need it three stab yourself in the scrotum with the pen good night <laughs>
on with the show. Helping decide our winners tonight, Catherine Ryan and our special guest judge, Joe Lyser. <laughs> Catherine is set to start in her own sitcom. I'm not sure what it's about, but looking at it, I'm guessing it's a story about a horse. <laughs> Catherine Ryan, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and joining Catherine, we couldn't afford Graham Norton. Tom Allen was unavailable. Ryan and Clark is busy. Alan Carr wasn't interested. And Dale Winton is dead. So here he is, <laughs> Joe Lyser. <laughs> Nothing. Have you got any advice for Joe on judging? I love Joe, and I feel like we've been very good friends for a long time. And I yeah. think my advice to Joe would just be be yourself, and you are a terrible prick. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know that about you, Joe, but if you just let the prick out, you'll yeah. do really well on Roast Battle. You're all fucking wanker. Yeah. <laughs> God, that felt good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before we get on to our first battle, it's time to meet the man keeping order tonight. He's the referee that runs the roast. It's Brian Moses! Keep it going for Jimmy Carr, actually. We oh, <laughs> came to see a battle. Who's ready for a battle? <laughs> well, first up, we have Adam Rowe and Maisie Adam. I feel frustrated because when people think of the North, Adam is what they picture. I don't want him representing where I'm from. I wouldn't trust Adam with... I wouldn't lend him a pen. Just gotta be brutal from the off. Start with a harsh joke, get harsher and harsher and harsher as it goes on. All I need to do is use long words and I've won. I've gotta go for her appearance hard, I've gotta go for Yorkshire hard, and, you know, she's epileptic, so that's funny, isn't it? Adam looks like every lad who stole my lunch money as a kid, so this is just revenge. And looking at him, he clearly spent it. This next one's the Battle of the North! So if you're watching at home, please turn on your subtitles. <laughs> Make it loud for Adam Rowe! <laughs> and Maisie Adam! <laughs> All right, you two. Here are your rules. Rule one, it's five jokes apiece. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, it's Joe Lysett's rule of three. If there's less than three people, <laughs> he's not interested. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, who's going first? Well, I mean, just first impressions. Um, Adam, you look like an Eastern European sex trafficker. <laughs> and Maisie looks like a girl you're taking back because no one's interested in fucking her. <laughs> So I think, I think Maisie goes first, I think. <laughs> uh, Maisie, are you ready? Ready. Uh, Audience, are we ready? Yeah. Let's um, Do I start now or do I wait for Adam's man tits to stop wobbling? Or... <laughs> so, uh, Adam's nickname at school was Thigh Eye because he's had a, uh, an operation where they took a muscle from his thigh and put it into his eye, which means that when Adam blinks, it's the most work his legs have ever done. <laughs> Maisie, how have you got such long legs and you're still unappealing? You've got the legs of a catwalk model and the head of a Premier League centre-back. <laughs> Tall, dark and handsome, you look like Professor Snape's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from a bloke who looks like Jack Black after a house fire. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, what, what is going on here? You look like a pack of seagulls pecked off your face while she refused to drop your cornetto. <laughs> <laughs> Maisie is epileptic, but she is less epileptic fit and more epileptic she'll do. <laughs> uh... <laughs> said that he had to be funny at school, otherwise he'd have been eaten alive. Um, they'd have needed a bloody big appetite, mate. Um, <laughs> Adam drove down from Liverpool today. A uh, bit of advice, Adam. You don't have to stop at Burger King at all of the service stations. <laughs> 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 
Thank you, Julia Seizure. Maisie is often described in reviews as down to earth, by which I think they mean she's so pale she looks like she's being dug up. <laughs> you look like a ghost of one of the prostitutes the Yorkshire Ripper killed. <laughs> uh, Adam's mum died from alcoholism, uh, and whilst he's uh, very conscious of not following in her footsteps, he also doesn't uh, shy away from a pint with the lads. Um, don't worry, I'm sure it doesn't run in your family, Adam. In fact, I'm certain no one runs in your family. <laughs> Before she started comedy, Maisie's first TV appearance was actually on The Chase. She went on it so she finally knew what it was like to be pursued by a man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Uh, OK, right. Adam is always boasting about he sells out all of his gigs. Uh, he always kills it. Uh, I just want to know, Adam, what sort of level killing are we talking? If one is like a four-star review from The Guardian and ten is booze killing your mum. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> oh. Maisie's parents always wanted a boy. Imagine how gutted they're going to be when they find out she's not one. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, she was actually an unwanted pregnancy. Every year on your birthday, your dad ties flowers to his bedstand because that is where the accident happened. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I thought that was ex incredibly entertaining. <laughs> Very much enjoyed it. Yeah, really original jokes. It kept me on my toes. I didn't know where you were going with it. Um, you both have such terrible accents. <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to laugh and close down a mine listening to you. <laughs> common, common northern people. Um, Maisie, at first, I didn't know where I recognized you from, and then I remembered, oh, that was my body when I was poor, and I missed it. <laughs> You are short and scouse with a lazy eye. I cannot believe it took you this long to get on roast battle. It's like we rolled three losers into one person. Is anyone going to talk about the Hobbit's legs? <laughs> I got them off the same toy you got your face from. <laughs> <laughs> Get me some sage and onion stuffing. This is a bloody roast! <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you make of this? I'd just like you to both know that you're beautiful. No. <laughs> you, ne you needn't say these horrible things to each other. Maze, you've got lovely skin. And Adam, he, yeah, there's no neck, but. <laughs> okay, so what, who have we got as a winner? What do, you, what do you think, Joe? This is tricky. I really loved when Maisie brought up the dead mum and mm. said, what, is from one... From one to ten? From one to ten, with yeah. ten being a dead mum. But then he answered. And I think just for the fact that he said seven, <laughs> which was so funny, I have to give it to Adam. Right. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Kathy? I loved this roast very much. I was impressed by both of you. I did get distracted by the dead mum stuff because immediately my rescue syndrome kicked in and I wanted to fuck you. Um, uh, as if he doesn't have enough to worry about. <laughs> Adam, when did she die? 2013. Are you still claiming benefits on her behalf? <laughs> yes, and I'm still paying more tax than you. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Can I? You can pick a tie if you want. Yeah, I don't think I've ever chosen a tie. I'll choose my first tie. <laughs> well, here's, here's how I see this. I, uh, I know Maisie's Maze uh, very funny. She's great. Adam, I'd never seen you before, and I was pretty blown away, I've got to say. I just thought you had killer, killer jokes. Yeah. Uh, Adam gets it. After the break, for more burns than Hiroshima 1945. <laughs> Welcome back.
welcome back to Roast Battle. Let's have another round of applause for tonight's guest judge, Joe Lyser. Uh, so you're known for your complaining. What's uh, what's grinding your gears at the moment? What's upsetting you? Uh, the big five: famine, poverty, war, disease. Eamon Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> well, same question to Catherine Ryan. What's getting on your fake tits? <laughs> <laughs> Not Eamon Holmes, unfortunately. <laughs> I think mostly I'm a big fan of Joe's Instagram. He's been gardening a lot, and yes. I think it's too gay. <laughs> the amount of gardening that Joe's doing, the level of seriousness, the aggression that goes, he'll be like, I grew these fucking tomatoes. I get very aggressive in the garden, but that's because things keep going wrong. My kale, Jimmy. Jeez, God, I am so gay, aren't I? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you couldn't have sounded gay just then with two cocks in your mouth. It was... <laughs> yeah! I like cock, Jimmy. <laughs> it's a shame you don't have one or we'd be friends. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Who's, um... Who's ready for another battle? Let's get Brian up here. <laughs> Phil Wang and Fern Brady! We come from very different worlds. I come from the land of the living, uh, whereas Fern is some kind of Victorian zombie prostitute. The animosity between me and Phil has deepened since his ex-girlfriend has made a pass at me a couple of times. Probably because she likes sleeping with people that have tits and no penises. <laughs> She's going to come after my privilege, my fancy accent, and my nice clothes. I'm going to shock him to his core and throw him completely off course. She's just jealous because I know how to use a knife and fork. Give it up for Fern Brady! Does it say Jackie Slam on the back Jackie of that? Jackie Slam. <laughs> a little bit racist, Phil. That's my Christian name. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here are the rules. Rule one, it's five jokes apiece. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, let's make this quick. My son's in the car. <laughs> I'm kidding. I've never met my son. <laughs> Catherine will let me. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, who's going first? Well, uh, I think we should let the Asian lady from Killing Eve go first. Phil, you're up. <laughs> you ready, Phil? Uh, Are we ready? Yeah. Run, run! Fern. fern, fern, fern. Fern is so pale when she goes to the tanning salon, she has to stay overnight. <laughs> when people meet Fern for the first time, they say hello, but what they're thinking is, oh, that's the colour I want for my bathroom. <laughs> Fern is so white, Comedy Central had to book three extra black people on this series <laughs> to make up for it. Well, firstly, I've been advised not to mention paedophiles, making it impossible to joke about Phil's glasses. <laughs> How can you have the glasses of a sex offender and the fat tits of a baby? You must just <laughs> stare into a mirror molesting yourself. <laughs> That's how I unwind. <laughs> Thank you, Fern. Fern there, looking like a trans Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Fern was oh, actually... Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Uh, Fern was actually approached for Shrek the Musical, cos uh, she already has the accent. <laughs> They'd save a fortune on makeup. <laughs> I think, and that voice, I think the most amazing thing about Fern is that she sounds as rough as she looks. That, that's not throat cancer, by the way. That's how she actually talks. Fern has a face for radio and a voice for radiotherapy. Phil <laughs> is what a lot 
us Southeast Asians would call a banana. Yellow on the outside, white on the inside, and something I'd only ever slide up my fanny in a moment of desperation. <laughs> Nice to know you're getting fruit, though. <laughs> <laughs> I probably don't know this, but uh, Fern is obsessed with plastic surgery and the idea of getting plastic surgery. Fern has actually already had Botox put in her forehead, uh, which means she can no longer look surprised. For example, when a waiter doesn't call her sir or she sees a vegetable. <laughs> uh, Fern's also told me that she wants to get a nose job, although knowing her, that probably just means she wants to get fucked in the nostrils. <laughs> Brady, Fernie, Fernie, Brady, oh Brady, I'm just gonna keep repeating my name so I don't need to write a joke, which is a trademark of Phil's act. <laughs> Phil likes to say his name a lot at the opening of sets, and it's nice that someone is saying his name with a sense of satisfaction because usually he only hears it in a disappointed context. <laughs> oh, Phil, you've come already. <laughs> Last joke! Phil Wink, Phil Wink, Phil Wink. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fern used to work uh, as a stripper at what must have been the UK's only body positive strip club. <laughs> <laughs> she actually earned the nickname Hitler for all the damage she inflicted on poles. <laughs> done a lot to combat stereotypes about Southeast Asian men. Uh, normally, people think of them as hard-working with tiny cocks, but Phil is actually quite lazy. <laughs> Since doing better in comedy, you have had more attention from women. Unfortunately, a lot of women refer to Phil's dick as the Chinese iPhone factory, because after they work on it, they also want to throw themselves off a roof. <laughs> <laughs> no physical contact, man. Come on over, come on over. Uh, okay, um... I can't put my finger on this, but there's something of the catfish about this relationship. Fern, you look like a woman Phil's been talking to over the internet for a number of years, and he's rightfully disappointed when you turned up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you two ever banged it out? No, that's Not why th there's so much chemistry tonight. <laughs> I mean, Fern's jokes, the, the, the uh, fat baby tits. Yeah. It's a yeah. devastating line to a man, especially a man with fat baby tits. Uh, <laughs> I, I, th I thought, Phil, you had some amazing lines. The, the stripper line was brilliant. A nickname Hitler because of the damage he's inflicted on poles. Mm. <laughs> and also, when people see Fern, they say hello, but they mean, I'd like that colour for my bathroom. Such a silly joke. I liked the mixture of cruelty and silliness. <laughs> Fern roasts with absolutely no fucks. She's got the haunted look of someone who saw a dead body before age nine. <laughs> I thought you were both so savage. I didn't even make many notes because I was just captivated by this roast. Joe, what do you think? I, I, I am confused about the glasses. What the fuck are those glasses for? <laughs> well, I tried them as a joke and then thought, oh, actually, I suit sort of an 80s serial killer. Uh, <laughs> turns out it's my vibe, it's my spirit animal. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> the nose job line, that was a nice little play on words about shagging in noses. Uh, uh, do you, in fact, do you want a nose job? Not now. <laughs> Fern, you don't need anything doing. I want to save that. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Gre like, Greta Thunberg hates this show because of the amount of wasted plastic on these guys' faces. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need any work doing. You don't need it either, Catherine. Jimmy, you need fucking loads. <laughs> Uh, Joe, I've I, I got to push you on this. Who you got as a winner? Um, oh, I, this is a really tricky one for me. I, I think the Hitler polls joke just did it for me, so Phil, Phil Wang. You're going Phil Wang, OK. Wow. I thought you both did great, but it was Fern's, like, cold assassin delivery that tipped it for me. My winner is Fern. An incredibly close call on this one, but I think Phil Wang just has it. And your winner, Phil Wang! Uh, oh, okay. 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 
<laughs> superb from both of you. Okay, we're going to talk about joke of the night. What's your joke of the night? I really liked um, Julia's seizure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My joke of the night, I think, was Adam Rowe earlier saying uh, her parents wanted a boy. Imagine how disappointed they'll be when they find out she isn't one. Uh. Oh, my God, so brutal. I think that's the joke of the night. That's all we've got time for. If you were upset by anything you've heard tonight, why not write into the show? Well, I'll tell you why not. Because no one cares what you think. Good night. <laughs>
but there's currently less hair on his head than there is on Prince Archie's ball sack. <laughs> As you can see, Jordan has uh, made a very good job of hiding his very big ears. <laughs> Nice try, Jordan. The only time you've seen a gun is when you try to piss those motherfuckers. <laughs> but Jordan, all jokes aside, is an inspiration. He overcame anxiety issues, depression, and ADHD, and then turned around and subjected the rest of the world to that by producing music. <laughs> Dane actually looks like a great Dane. <laughs> Dane, if your jowl's got any sagia, you look like an awkward episode of Stars in Their Eyes where Jonathan Ross tries to impersonate Kanye. <laughs> As a rapper, performer, uh, have a lot in common with Will Smith if he did have sex with one of the aliens from Independence Day. Uh, Love that film. Great what you film. guys don't know about Jordan is that Jordan actually has 16 siblings. I can't help but think if he had let as many black guys into the studio as his mum did in the bedroom, he'd have better music. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought this was a fucking battle. Dane has a podcast called Dane Baptiste Questions Everything. But the main question the audience asks themselves is why the fuck am I listening to this prick? <laughs> seriously, stop doing it. <laughs> it's because no, no, seriously, stop. It's informative <laughs> and entertaining. It's not. Unlike your albums we never heard. I did quite well, but I won't do this now. You were doing quite well. You were very big on MySpace. Thanks. <laughs> no, MySpace! Let's go! I actually took the time, Jordan, to uh, look at your discography uh, very briefly. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, bus was coming. <laughs> I remember, and some of you may not know this, but James Corden, uh, he had a cameo in his uh, video for Mama Do The Hump. You know James Corden, who does Carpool Karaoke, which is like a show where he invites musicians on that he's friends with to, like, do songs? <laughs> I wonder who has been missing from that particular show. <laughs> which is a real shame, considering you do dress like a lesbian vampire killer. <laughs> Dane actually does do a lot of telly. Um, how do you get those shows? Do they shine a bat signal into the sky that says, Mo Gilligan is busy? <laughs> Dane is so forgettable that even his mum has him saved on her phone as that black comedian. What did you make of this battle, Brian? Well, I make of this? I feel like we were like a sitcom called Two and a Half Black Men. <laughs> So, if, I thought you were incredibly funny, Jordan, uh, this Because, oh. I mean, Dane does this for a living, I know, and you've been on the show before. I know you're very funny. You know, Jordan, you were surprised. I, mean, I think if music doesn't work out, and it hasn't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this could be... <laughs> but you're, you're charm personified, and for me, you had the two best jokes of that roast. I mean, you, his mum has him in her phone as that black comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Devastating. I really liked um, Jonathan Ross doing Kanye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you are a jowly motherfucker, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming from you, Jimmy. Yeah. I'm a jowly motherfucker. I've had work done. I know. It's like you're a vampire that feeds on Botox. That's how... <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Sarah, what do, you, what do you think? Well, I'm absolutely not used to judging the performance of two black guys, unlike Catherine and her sex life. Yeah. And <laughs> you, Jimmy, running the illegal Hunger Games with poor people in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> I've cut right back on that. Uh, <laughs> um, I didn't understand a lot of it. I've got some questions. What's going down on a rusty trombone? It's a, it's a, a rimming whilst uh, getting a hand job. Oh, too much, guys. <laughs> Minus ten points for the film. It... We've never had minus. <laughs> okay, what do we think of the battle? I feel like I learned a lot from this roast. Prince Archie's ball bag, that's topical now. Are we thinking about the testicles of the royal baby? For the sake of comedy, yes. But not for too long. Not for too long, because he'll grow out of it and you won't fancy him anymore. <laughs> 
I thought there were a lot of great jokes from Jordan. Dane, you came back very cutting though, attacking his music, and then crucially, really highlighting that James Corden won't work with him. <laughs> that was very mean, and for me, the winner is Dane. Right. Sarah? Um, Sarah what, what I, I found Dane's anger scary and too much. <laughs> so Jordan is my winner, because I thought he was adorable and very funny. He's adorable. <laughs> I think because he doesn't do this for a living and he stepped up and he had genuinely, I think you hurt him, he's genuinely upset. <laughs> Jordan, I think you got this. That's it for part one. Join us after the break for more of the show, whose only chance of winning a BAFTA is if they introduce a prize for fat shaming. <laughs> Roast battle. Let's have another round of applause for tonight's special guest judge, Sarah Pascoe. <laughs> it's great to have Sarah Pascoe on the show because not only is she a feminist activist who won't stand for any sexist nonsense, but she's also lovely to look at. So well done, babe. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. Now you two are genuinely very good friends. Yes, I love Catherine. She's like a toilet. Her skin is porcelain, and men spend too long on top of her. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Okay. OK, who's ready for another battle? These battlers live together, so just like when you see Jimmy and Catherine, you're gonna look at these two and be like, oh, ho, ho, they've definitely fucked. <laughs> it's Lou Sanders and Luke McQueen! Lou and I live together, so that's gonna help me uh, with the information that I've gathered to make her feel really sad about herself. How did I prepare? Well, carbohydrates, hanging out with mean girls, and I meditated on unpleasantness. I prepared for this battle by finding out the thing that Lou's most protective about, and it's her family. And that's why I'm going after them. I want to be so mean and wretched to Luke that he has to spend thousands of pounds on counselling and healing. Lou's my landlady, so I'm used to giving her my money. So tonight it'll be nice to give her some pretty harsh criticisms instead. Also, I'm his healer, so that's coming straight back around to Mama. Give it up! Rule one, it's five jokes apiece. Rule number two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, no fat chicks. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, who do you think should go first? Uh, OK, um, I think the audience probably know Lou best from her stand-up shows, her TV work. She was Taskmaster champion. Mm -hmm. And you probably know Luke best if you went to school with him. <laughs> I, love, I love that Luke has his armband on to be allowed in the building. <laughs> <'cause that's... laughs> Just take yours off. Oh, unlucky. Later. I'm not going back there without one of these. <laughs> uh, Brian, who's, who's going first? What do you think, Lou? Lou, are you ready? Woo! Ready. Are we ready? Woo! Okay, we were quite worried when we were asked to do this because we're best friends and I didn't want to be mean to Luke, but I'm also his landlady and he is behind with rent, so I'm doing... <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this for both of us, in a way. Uh, Luke uh, has got terrible taste in women, right? And I know this because once I tried to get off with him and he didn't want to. <laughs> uh, so I overheard Luke on the phone to a woman and she was trying to get him to like do dirty talk and I think he panicked and just said how many press-ups he can do <laughs> and it's five. <laughs> Lou grew up without a great-grandfather. He died before she was born. <laughs> because he was so desperate not to be part of our life. <laughs> he didn't fight in the war. Spent the whole time hidden in a cupboard. Furious he didn't have a diary on him. 
when the moon landing was televised, he watched Coronation Street. <laughs> Lou's great-grandfather is so stupid, he once come home with a single bottle of washing-up liquid when the shop was running a two-for-one promotion. <laughs> Idiot twat! Got him! <laughs> Right, Luke's a bit of a prankster, and that's why he's given my rent money to a woman in Labricks. <laughs> but <laughs> I am also a prankster, and that's why he doesn't know this, but for the last six months, I've been using his toothbrush as a vibrator. <laughs> 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 and it's not even electric, so I'm really committed. <laughs> Well, I did know that, so the joke's on you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, this time I'm really going to roast Lou. But before I do that, you need to know what two things are. First thing, the parasitic worm. The parasitic worm <laughs> is a worm that crawls into the eye of a snail underground. A bird comes down, eats the snail with the worm inside. Worm procreates in the bird's stomach, gets shut out. That's the parasitic worm. Second thing, my Auntie Susan's favourite cooking pot. <laughs> this is a bit rusty, not good to look at, doesn't really work anymore, OK? So now you know what those two things are, I can finally roast Lou. <laughs> what do you get if you cross a parasitic worm <laughs> and my Auntie Susan's favourite cooking pot? <laughs> Lou Sanders' great-grandfather! Go there! <laughs> it's easy! So... There's two little secrets that Luke's got that his parents don't know, so I guess this one's for them. Um, the first one is that he once got done for criminal damage <laughs> in Madame Tussauds... <laughs> 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 ..for hitting a statue of um, Joan of Arc with a baton. <laughs> <laughs> True story, isn't it, dear? And <laughs> also, once, when he was younger, he got a 52-year-old pregnant in Falaraki. <laughs> um, <laughs> She decided not to keep it, and he thanked her by getting her some W.H. Smith vouchers. <laughs> Have you got a second option for that last one, dear? No. <laughs> um, I realise I've been going on and on about uh, the, the same thing, and uh, um, obviously I don't want that to get too old. Just like Lou's great-grandfather! <laughs> Lou's great-grandfather looks like an evil cartoon version of Captain Birdseye! <laughs> Yeah, uh, to be fair, you do need to know what he looks like for that one to work. That's a miss. <laughs> Last joke! Luke was the most handsome boy in his class, but he was homeschooled. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the teacher really fancied him. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of Luke's dad... <laughs> <laughs> Luke's dad is really dumb, and he doesn't ever get any film plots. And the other day, we were watching Big Girls with Big Titties, Licky Licky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was the film called? <laughs> it was called Two Big Girls with Two Big Butts, Licky Licky Nice Time. <laughs> seen it? And... Have you seen it? I've seen and it, I'm in it. it... <laughs> watched it with his father, like I say, and he didn't understand any of the plot, and ha I had to recreate it for him. He's dumb. <laughs> Lou Sanders is a uh, vegan. She hates the idea of animals being killed for food. Unlike her great-grandfather, <laughs> who is literally responsible for the death of a trillion chickens. That's right, her great-grandfather is Colonel Sanders, the KFC man. <laughs> I think we can finally enjoy the reference from before about evil cartoon Captain Birdseye. <laughs> Queen. You can hug. Oh. <laughs> Come on over. Well, that was mental. <laughs> um, Catherine, think... what, did, what did you make of this madness? I really enjoyed it. I love the style. I love that it was different. You seem like siblings who experimented with each other growing up. <laughs> that is so the vibe. You've nailed that. I think, like, I just never know what to expect from either of these two comedians. I, I was expecting jokes. I yeah. wasn't. Well, they're, like they're avant-garde comedians. Yeah. Which is French for not funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, I'm sorry, someone, 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 someone track down the real Sarah Pascoe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a bit strange that you kept talking about Lou's 
great-grandfather, when there's so much to talk about with Lou. Like, you, if you don't know that much about Lou, the audience might not know that she keeps crystals in her vagina, mm. which is why men refer to it as the Temple of Doom. <laughs> There's stuff about Lou that's interesting. The crystals is interesting. Uh, Lou, I know that you're, uh, you were in Alcoholics Anonymous, and obviously not anonymous anymore because I just said it, but... <laughs> so, Lou, you don't, you don't drink anymore? No. But to me, you will always be a six-pinter. Um... I stopped drinking because I went home with men who look like you, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, who do you have as a winner? What do you think? Um, I have to go for... Lulu Sanders, because of the range of what she talked about, because it felt like she really, really worked hard at this. You're both very funny, but lose it for me. Okay. Uh, I mean... uh, Catherine Ryan, what do you think? A lot of great jokes um, from Lou. And my favourite was that she used Luke's toothbrush mm -hmm. as a vibrator, even though it wasn't electric. So yeah. I'm going for Lou as well. <laughs> I think, Luke, you were uh, an incredibly brave battler. You had one comedic idea and you absolutely rode it to death. <laughs> you loved answer. But for me, I think Lou is the winner. <laughs> Lou Sanders is the winner! <laughs> well, let's talk about the joke of the night. What do you like? Um, I love that toothbrush joke as well, but my mm. favourite joke of the night was Lou saying Luke was homeschooled, the most handsome boy in the class. <laughs> loved it. <laughs> Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Catherine? I liked when Jordan said that Dane Baptiste's mom saved him in her phone as that black comedian. <laughs> that was very hurtful, truly cutting. Yeah, that was also my favourite joke of the night. So, Jordan, you got the joke of the night as well. <laughs> well, that is all we have time for. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you've been offended by anything you've seen on the show, don't watch again. Yeah, it really is. That's it. Good one. <laughs>